So, Hans. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for agreeing to uh, be interviewed by me and to share today. Um, I think that the first time I met you was when I had the sort of meet and greet here at the church. But the second time I saw you, you were wearing this big hat and you had a, <laughs> a, 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 a handkerchief over your face and you were carrying a weed eater out here <laughs> in the back, trimming down everything in sight that wasn't meant to grow. Yeah. Yeah. I like to cut things down. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I've heard a pretty long version of how you and Martha met, but what's your version? I think I may have only heard her version. Well, first, thanks for the invitation here. It's a privilege <laughs> to sit here and have this interview. Now, you need to understand, Jeff, I'm under a partial gag order by my <laughs> to, 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 to not reveal too many details. But, uh, but uh, I'm happy to uh, give you a summary. But, so um, there's, this, there's this little university down the road called Stanford, right? Yeah. And, um, it happened to be that Stanford, since 1958, had a uh, subsidiary campus up on a hill next to the village where I used to live. And students had the opportunity to um, come and visit places in Europe, and this place was one of them, for half a year to engage in a new culture and a new language. And as we know, as adventurous as Martha is, you know, she signed up for that program. Mm -hmm. So she arrived on my 27th birthday in 1975, actually greeted the group at the train station, you know, it's pretty romantic. And, uh, and so um, then uh, a couple of weeks later, her faculty member uh, arranged a party to invite the young town folks and the new students, you know, to meet. And uh, so I happened to announce that I like to hike and uh, whoever would like to come along on Sunday uh, would be happy. And so Martha immediately raised her hand and a couple others as well. So that's for how the relationship started. And, right. uh, and it was uh, really, really, uh, you know, Pretty soon, it's only Moss and I were hiking. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there was this, uh, I don't want to go over time, but there was this funny episode when we finally decided to uh, settle in the United States, which I promoted heavily. We had an interview with the immigration official in Frankfurt. And so we were sitting there in front of that uh, immigration official and he kept asking all these questions directed at Martha. And because that was the time when American servicemen brought their fur lines to the United States, right? And so he just had immediately thought, you know, Martha is that German fur line that wants to go to Germany. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and only a way into the interview, he, he realized that it was actually me he should be asking the question. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, good. So going forward a little bit, what were your first impressions when you began to, in, to attend Ladera Community Church? Well, I have to develop a little bit into uh, the history of where I grew up. I grew up in, a, in then a little town and the church was kind of a institution not like here, you know, it's pretty liberal and, and comfortable. And also in Germany, when you belong to a church, being the Lutheran, the mainstream church of the Catholic, 8% of your paycheck is immediately deducted every month to support these churches. And, and so the, the people uh, in, I shouldn't speak for all of them, but most people in Germany look at the church as a service institution. So you get baptized, you get 
married and you get a decent funeral, right? And in, in the meantime, you may visit that church when you think it's about time you should show your face again, right? And a little bit like me here. And, and, uh, and, and so on, on Christmas and Easter, yes. Uh, but it is, it, it, the, you keep sort of your distance to the minister. You know, the minister is this authority and, and you, you know, kind of try to avoid him. Uh, you know, unless you have a real problem. Um, so when I when I f first uh, was introduced to the, this church, I I felt this is a community that really engages. It is their church. They work for it. They volunteer for it. They, it means a lot to them, right? It's not that distance. You know, I pay my eight percent and I go there when I want. Uh, and and another interesting experience was the first picnic I attended at Hutter Park. I was chatting casually with, uh, with a gentleman and so we talked and, uh, and Martha said, you know, you talk, you just talked to the minister, it was Wayne Dalton. And what? <laughs> because <laughs> that's what didn't happen in my youth. You know, you had this casual conversation with the pastor. <laughs> So that's the difference, the formality. Yeah, and then it's, there and it's an engaged community that supports its church and feels really uh, committed to it. Yeah. Do you think maybe they should give me a little more authority or is it okay? <laughs> well, Jeff, you know, <laughs> remain how you are. It's easy, <laughs> easy approachable. <you> know? <laughs> so now that um, Martha's retired, you're retired, less responsibility. I'm, I'm thinking you're thinking about your bucket list. What are the things that you want to do? So what's, what's next on that for you? Well, you know, I, before I kick that proverbial bucket, um, I like to visit uh, the national parks here in the United States. You know, we go to Europe and we're all stricken by the scenery there, but we forget that how beautiful America is and, 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 and these national parks. And um, so in my time that I have been here, I've only visited a handful. And so mm -hmm. that's the plan that's on the bucket list. And this is kind of related, but maybe not. And that is what is the one thing you want to do that you haven't done yet? <sighs> well, uh, <laughs> this may come to surprise to Martha. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have never learned how to cook. And you know, there's oh. a funny story. When I was in my 20s, a couple of friends of mine, we signed up for a cooking class. And so every week we went there and, we, and the instructor gave her great effort, you know, teach us how to do these things. But we were just not good students. So the proverb, the saying was always in the end, the wine was the best tonight. And, and so, and, and so I, I, I thought maybe I should try at least be able to put a simple meal together. And uh, as I said, it will be a surprise to Martha and it all depends whether it's edible. <laughs> okay. So we haven't, you and I haven't talked much about spirituality, maybe just a little bit. Um, but what are the ways that you see God working in your life now? Well, that is a question that probably a lot of people ask themselves. I ask myself that uh, myself. Now, the way I look at it, there are many things the human, a human cannot really comprehend. And you know, an example for me is the vastness of the universe. Why does it exist? Why, how was it created? Why is it there? You know, there must be, there is an entity, we'll call it God, who had created that. But closer to earth, I can personally relate better to Jesus. Maybe because he was only here for a little bit over 2000 years. But um, I'll, I look at this individual as a very courageous person at the time. You know, he 
made people uncomfortable. He certainly challenged the authorities. And as happens with so many dissidents, the authorities don't like it and they put them away. And that happened to Jesus. So what, after being here and seeing this church over a number of years, what kind of advice would you give to the leadership of this church? Well, uh, I'm not a real regular attendee, uh, as you may have noticed, but... Um, I'm figuring the outside perspective might be good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I am really pleased to see how um, the fairs for, uh, is one uh, event that is really helping the church to get connected to the community. Mm -hmm. You know, in the last fair, it's not the second time I think we have it, uh, it was really pleasant, you know, how a lot of people came, how they engaged, how they appreciated, and, and it, that reflects very positive on the church. And, and also feeding the hungry, the homeless. So the outreach and make the church known to the community, that's a, that's a good way to go. Okay. And then the last question what should we know about you that we don't already know? Well, uh, there probably would be many things, but I'll, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's focus on one. I, when I, beginning with my youth, uh, and I'm not the only one, many people, many young people in Germany were fascinated by America, by the old West, how it was, and it was more portrayed in a romantic way. You know, there were the Indians and the cowboys and, and the settlers. Um, so I, I was starting to read more about the, the novels, about the Old West, how it was uh, conquered, and realized, you know, it was not just romantic adventurism, it was brutality, it was suffering on, on all sides, and how this country was, was settled. And it's fascinating, and uh, you know you have to have sympathy with, with both with all sides. And it was not just the shootouts; it was suffering on the way. And so you could see that yeah. through that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I think it's a fascinating history. It's a young history compared with Europe. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for sharing well, with me. Uh, and, uh, and for all of you out there, remember that we're doing this on a volunteer basis now. And, and Hans was the first to volunteer for this. So we're setting a new precedent. You mean I don't get paid for that? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, maybe, thanks. Maybe we should let them ask a question. You know, maybe Martha has a question she'd like to put you on oh, the spot. Gee, you know. Anyway. No? Well, okay. thank you for the privilege. <laughs> <laughs> All right.